Good day, Tragic here, and boom, 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 boom. It is the new Lord of the Rings plaque. Well, it's new for me. Hey, let's uh, get into this baby. Now, I, uh, I've i been playing a lot of this game recently. I kind of got out of it for a while, uh, but I committed myself to buying this cycle, the Hairs of Numero cycle, but I have to admit that the new cycle that's just been announced with uh, all the elves and everything and Isengard sounds extremely good because uh, uh, the elves are going to all focus on bouncing and into and out of play effects which can create some really fun decks in other games anyway like uh, bounce effects are some of the most fun decks in card games, I think, because they're so dynamic, they're always bouncing cards around and there's a lot of cool stuff happens in them. So, I'll probably be getting the next cycle as well, at least. So, let's see what we got. I think we'll start with the uh, player cards. And there you go, that's the, the problem with the problem with the Lord of the Rings, one of the problems with the Lord of the Rings, let's have a look at a single pack from Netrunner, even though this is two packs and Star Wars is this kind of thickness as well. So even after two years, we still have like half the cards available for player decks as in the other, in the other LCGs. Okay, so here's our first hero. Well, uh, I think there's only one hero pack. Faramir, as a hero, he's got an 11 threat, which is huge. Huge! Uh, two defense, five health is good. Two attack and two uh, questing. So he's got a lot of, uh, you know, mid-ground utility here. He has range. Obviously, that's extremely good. And Faramir gets plus one attack for each enemy in the staging area. Well, I mean, uh, I'm a huge fan of staging area, you know, low threat staging area attacking kind of decks. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly who I would go with. He has got the printed range, which means he can carry the U-Bow. So maybe hook him up with Sam Ganji or, uh, you know, just so you can get the U-Bow out. I mean, well, he is law, which means he can pull songs quite easily. But uh, interesting card, the threat is quite high, especially for that ability. So I'm not quite sure exactly how much use he's going to get. But then again, you know, we whack him down with uh, uh, that law chick that's like minus three law. Like if you have three law heroes, it's like minus one to every threat. Or you stick in, uh, I think it's actually a law card as well, Pippin, which is increase threat of every enemy. So there's a lot of uh, threat management, really heavy threat management. So he could probably ha find, so I'm definitely going to be playing around with him when I'm... Uh, checking out my new Dunhir decks because I love attacking into the staging area and just not having to deal with monsters at all. That's my like one of my favorite things. Is that a, look at that. It looks like there's a rip in the card, but it's just like a really shiny nose. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, whatever. All right. Uh, so, we now have the Sword of Morth... of Morthhound. Morthhound. The Sword of Morthhound. It's a uh, item weapon, law, one cost, very, very nice. Attached to Gondor ally, the ally gains the outland trait. Okay, so this is actually quite cool. The outland deck, the outland deck, as you probably know if you're watching this, is one of the most powerful decks in the entire game. Bonkersly powerful. Uh, and getting more powerful. It's it's really, really strong. But the Gondor deck is a little bit weak. Still, there's some very nice Gondor allies that you can now put into the Outland deck without too much dilution happening. I like this, this gives the Outland deck a bit more legs. I actually wish it went the other way around. What we really need is more cards that give the Outline trait to Gondor characters to kind of mix those two decks even more. Eh, it's all right. Nothing too exciting. Doesn't give any pluses to attack. So, what have we got next? Men of the West, Outlands. It's an Outlands event. Hmm. Return X Outline allies from your discard pile to your hand. Well, that's nothing but good, isn't it? Nothing but good. X being entire cards, not costs. So it's just X Outlines cards. So if you've got five resources, you get five cards back. I mean, can't go wrong with that, can you? That's very, very strong. <laughs> 
What have we got here for our first uh, tactics? Knight of Mirth Tirith, Gondor Warrior. Each of your heroes has if each of your heroes has a printed tactics resource icon, Knight of Mirth Tirith gains response. After the Knight of Mirth Tirith enters play, choose an enemy in the staging area. Engage that enemy and exhaust the knight to declare it as an attacker and resolve its attack against that enemy. Interesting. Uh, three printed tactic icons is expensive. There's a lot of these three printed resource icons cards coming up and I really feel that they're focused for multiplayer. You're not going to get away with a, you know, a mono sphere hero deck, even if you're running, you know, songs and stuff like that. Because you can't draw them very, very... I mean, if you've got three... You can probably splash one colour. If you've got three cards, you have a right chance to draw it to get a song splash. But still, it's expensive. This card is very similar to Sons of Andor, I think it is. It's a... Uh, well, actually, Sons of Andor, I think, can target cards anywhere on the table. Uh, I can't remember now. Whatever. The point is, the difference is that this one it actually allows you to instantly declare an attack. But it says... Uh, I'm... It says here, declare as the attacker and resolve its attack, which basically means that the, I'm pretty sure the enemy gets to attack as well. So it's like a full combat round, a little miniature combat round. Meh, not interested too much because of the, the three hero restriction. Gordian Fire. Attached to a Gondor or Duodane hero. Spend spend one resource from attached hero's resource pool to give attached hero plus one attack for each resource in the resource pool until the end of the phase. <laughs> wow, it's like a goblin's fire in Magic the Gathering, but just like tons better because you don't have to actually pump it. So you don't actually spend the resource. Oh no, spend one resource from attached hero's pool. No, you spend one resource and then he gets any all the resources. This is an extremely strong card. I mean... We've seen resourcefulness, we've seen uh, Steward of Gondor, you know, you can easily pile resources onto cards. Uh, I think this could be a way of getting extremely high attack values. Now, it only works on Gondor or Duodane heroes. Now, the Steward of Gondor, of course, gives any hero the Gondor trait. So, and obviously that's the card you want to combo it with because uh, it's, the, it's the most broken resource gen card anyway. So yeah, very, very strong card. Very strong. What else we got? Boom, boom, we doing. Laragir Shipwright. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Oh, can't pronounce these uh, fancy names. The Shipwright gets plus one will for each hero you control with a printed spirit resource icon not too impressed with this guy he does have some good uses though i mean he does have three health and a one defense which is fairly rare for a spirit ally they're usually one you know only got one uh, one health but i don't know again i'm not really into you know three printed uh spirit icons meh the only one in my opinion that really works with the three printed icons is law because they can cast in any turn because there's three of them they get three resources a turn minimum, they can always cast a uh, minstrel and get a song of their choosing. So a three lore heroes, all with printed lore, can splash pretty much anything, even multiple splashes, very, very easily. But spirit and tactics and leadership, it's just not as viable in my opinion. Though there are some very strong mono decks, uh, especially with that new hero that I don't know where she is, uh, when she came up. is a spirit hero that you can discard to bring cards back from the graveyard. Very, very cool. Okay, map of Enuriel. Uh, attached to a spirit hero. It's a, re a record. Hmm, that's an I don't think we've seen that uh, title before. Reduce the cost to play map of Ariel by one for each hero you control with a printed spirit resource icon. See, this is a much better idea for the restriction. I like this. Make the card a four cost, but then have reduced cost for each printed. Because that way you can still play them in non-mono decks. Okay, what's it say? Discard map of Emerald to pay... Uh, to play discard map to play any spirit event card in your discard pile as if it was in your hand. Then place that event on the bottom of your deck. Interesting. As far as I know, there are no cards that allow you to draw from the bottom of your deck yet. They will probably end up coming into the game at some point, though. Still, interesting. It's it's like a, a bad 
tomb, basically. Uh, if I was in, uh, if I was playing, if I, 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 th I think these records are not that, not that bad technically. You can, they're like tombs, you know, like a dwarven tomb. So if you really need your threat reduction, if you really need some of those vastly important spirit cards, you can play them at action speed, by the way. So just like tomb, you can't cast it to pull out a test of will and cancel a, an event because that needs to be at response speed to cancel when revealed events. Still, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't play this, but when I'm playing three tombs, I really feel that that is enough for most situations. And Tomb can also pull out allies or any any spirit card. Still, it could find a place. I'm um, yeah, I don't know. Doesn't really impress me. Next, next. Ranger bow attached to a ranger character restricted. Now the ranger deck uh, is definitely forming. You know, with all those awesome traps that go into the staging area. I love it. Attached to a ranger character restricted. That's a bit of a bummer. Exhaust Ranger's Bow and Attached Character to deal 1 damage to an enemy in the staging area. Okay, this uh, is not too impressive in my opinion. Not only does it require the hero to tap, it only does 1 damage. I mean, we've got done here. We've got great new bow. We've got so many different ways of attacking into the staging area now. Is that one damage even worth having a tapped hero? I'm not sure it is. We'll have a look as we play. What is next? Forest Patrol. Play only if you control at least one ranger character. Deal three damage to an enemy with at least one trap card attacked to it. Beautiful. Like I said, the trap deck is a really fun looking deck which fits directly into my playstyle, which is uh, encounter control. I, I, you, you know, if you've seen my videos, uh, I've been using a very similar deck for a lot of my videos because the Merkle cycle is so small, but I'm going to start the Kaz Doom cycle pretty soon and we'll get better card combinations. But even so, my thing, the thing that I, my favorite type of deck is decks that control the encounter deck. And the ranger deck fits in perfectly with that kind of idea. It's even lore, so it's got access to Denethor and Heramath. And uh, yeah, so this is brilliant. Love it. Love this card. This card looks awesome. Ooh, what is this purple baby? Oh, it's a Planthea Sphere. Attached to a noble hero. Exhaust the Planthea and attached hero to name a card type and look at the top three cards of the encounter deck. For each of those cards that matches the name type, draw a card. For each of those cards that does not match the name type, raise your threat by two. Interesting. This is actually quite an interesting card. I'm not 100% sure how much I would use it. There is one combo that springs to mind immediately. There is a secrecy card, but I can't remember the name of it, that lets you look at the top three cards of the encounter deck. So, you would need to draw this card, you would need to draw the secrecy card, and then draw another two cards. Plus, the, the secrecy card also lets you discard uh, an enemy as well, I think. Meh. That combo might be more trouble than it worth. It's probably more valuable just to cast the card. Still, interesting. Uh, is there anything else? I don't know. I can't remember if there's any other cards that allow you to scry the encounter deck deeper than three. Well, that's some pretty good stuff. I like a couple of these cards are pretty nice. Uh, definitely like, uh, this one here. Sweet. And this one here. Uh, and the Outlands one's pretty damn good too. So there's a lot of good stuff. That's a pretty decent pack. Not mind blowing. Okay, so let's have a look at our quest. Huh, there's only one quest card. Okay, so what have you got here? You've returned to Mirith Tirith, just in time to join the army of Gondor as it marches to Osgiliath. An army of orcs and Southerns have garrisoned the ancient city, but Lord Boromir means to take means to retake it. But Lord Bomber but Lord Bomber Bor but Lord Boromir means to take it. But Lord Boromir means to retake it. Eager to strike a blow against Mordor, you will see the city retaken or die in the attempt. Each player chooses one enemy and one unique location and adds them to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. Okay, and then there's only one, one, uh, one B, and that's the end of the game. Uh. Do that so you can see it. Player cards effect cannot place progress tokens on locations in the staging area. Force. When Osgiliath location leaves players an explored location, the first player takes control of that location. If the players control 
all of Gilius locations in play at the end of the round, they have won the game. Interesting. I quite like the mechanics of this of this set. Obviously, it's trying to get you to, you know, you're capturing points and controlling the locations on those points. So that's very, very cool thematically. Let's uh, see what happens. We have two of these guys. It's a 40 threat, 262 power creep so full on in this game. When revealed, add the topmost orc enemy from the encounter discard pile to the staging area. Eh, that's pretty bad. Shadow, defending player discards an attachment he controls. All attachment he controls instead if undefended. Ooh, it's that old Mirkwood shadow effect again. Always love that effect. And, uh, you know, I used to use this effect to, uh, s before there was all those ways to swap resources, you'd put Steward of Gondor on someone, top them up with resources, then purposely let the shadow discard the Steward of Gondor and then just recast it or pick it up with Hammersmith and recast it on a different hero. Interesting. Anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty bad card. He's got 40 threats, so he's easy to deal with. He's only got two defense, so even uh, done here without any modifications can start damaging when he's only three damage, so he's very, very easy to deal with. The point is that he pulls guys back from the brink of death. There's only two of them. Doesn't seem too hard so far. What else have we got? Okay, so a four attack, 33. Threat, one and one, again, very, very easy to deal with. What's this? After the Uruk soldier attacks and destroys a character, that character's controller returns a location he controls to the staging area if able. Interesting, shadow. Defending player raises threat by one for each location he controls. Very, very cool card. I like this card, again, high threat. So we don't have to worry about it too much in the staging area. There's one, two, three, four of them. So that's fairly common. Now, I really like this mechanic of them gaining threat, uh, like the shadow card. Is it the shadow card? Yeah, the shadow effect of them gaining threat based on locations. Like the more locations that, that you know, they've overtaken, the more, you know, the, the more the armies are attacking them kind of stuff. Okay, next, 25. Okay, this is a hard one. You have to have basically have secrecy almost to get under this. Secrecy is 20. It's got two defense, which actually cuts out quite a large number of the base, you know, spirit and law cards to be able to do damage. While engaged with a player, Southern Phalanx, uh, Southern Phalanx, Phalanx, uh, Phalanx, Phalanx. While engaged with the player, Southern Phalanx gains plus one attack for each location the player controls. Interesting. Shadow, attacking enemy gets plus one for each location. Okay, so this is a similar card, but a lot more deadly uh, than just raising threats. Interesting. There's one, two, three of them. More enemies. Wow. 37. Five attack, three defense, six health. Okay, so this is like an ogre. When revealed, Southern uh, uh, Southern Commander makes an immediate attack from the staging area against each player who controls at least one location. Wow! Now that is brutal. That is brutal. So if, uh, in solo, obviously it's just going to be one, but if you're playing multiplayer, he could attack three times, plus when he uh, comes down. Now it is a win revealed, and remember, a lot of people forget about this, but you can actually cast Test of Will to cancel when revealed effects on uh, character cards like this. The card still comes out, but the effect doesn't resolve. So easy to play around. Note that Eleanor's ability only works on treachery events, so Eleanor doesn't work for that. And here we have a Westgate. This is one of the cards that we have to choose to put into the staging area. Remember, part of the setup is one enemy and one unique location into the staging area. So my enemy of my choice would probably be the lieutenant here. Because one, it stops them from coming out, and two, uh, they're quite easy to deal with. High threat as well. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. West Bank, uh, I have to leave this down because there is only one copy of it because it is unique. Osgiliath location, this is the whole point. If there is no active location, search the encounter deck and discard pile for an Osgiliath location, reveal it and add it to the staging area, then make the west gate the active location. Shuffle the encounter deck. Forced. After the player who controls west gate lets an attack go undefended, return west gate to the staging area. Okay, so that is interesting. I I think I'm not quite sure. Do these come do these attach to 
heroes. Controlling locations. Uh, liberate blah, 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 blah. blah. You can drive the enemy, blah, 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 when they leave play. Removes all progress tokens from the explorer book and places it in front of him in his play area instead of discarding it. Okay, so they're not attached to heroes or characters in any way. They just become like, uh, you know, a location on your board. So then you can activate the action. And then it's also got a force, a force as well. It's an interesting card. It's, a, it's actually a really cool mechanic, you know, controlling locations, trying to, you know, as the battle comes up, you know, more threat, the more locations you control. I, I really dig that. Okay, so the King's Library. Wow, the art's off the chain in this game, isn't it? Two threat, three to explore. Travel, reveal the top card from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area to travel here. This is a completely trivial travel effect that you can easily play around. You've got Strider's Path. Uh, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Looks like we're actually running out of batteries, so I might just stop here. Uh, anyway, so the force. After the player controls the king's library, lets an attack go undefended. It, yeah, so if you do an undefended attack, it goes back to the staging area because you've been routed, basically. Okay, so I've got to stop this because I'm running out of batteries, and I will uh, be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back, and my uh, camera's all recharged. So, where are we? Ancient Harbor, 1-5. Players cannot travel here. Combat action. Exhaust a hero to place one progress token on Ancient Harbor. Hmm, interesting. Force. After the player who controls Ancient Harbor, uh, that's the same. The force is the same every time. Now, if I remember correctly, you cannot place... Uh, player cards effect cannot place progress tokens on locations. So, the only way to do it is one at a time. So, that's like five, five attack combat actions. Interesting. Combat, exhaust a hero, right. So if you actually, you know, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. See, if you are attacking the staging area, as you, as I'm thinking would be the good way to do this quest, you only need to, if you're attacking with one character, you attack with another two, just to tap in the combat to place tokens. That would work, wouldn't it? I think so. So let's just get rid of that. Okay. The old bridge. Uh, planning action. Spend two resources to place one progress token on the old bridge. One resource instead if there is another off Gilius location in the staging area. Hmm. Really like the idea of this quest. I actually wrote uh, a forum post way back before Khazad Doom about what I wanted the next expansion to be. Uh, after the Mirkwood cycle had ended and there was this little gap. And uh, I said that uh, the White Mountain, the White Palace or whatever the hell it's called, uh, Mirith Tirith would be a great location for a quest to have, you know, running out and capturing locations. And this is, this is basically that idea, but it's better than the idea that I proposed in the thread, but it's a very similar concept of changing it into picking locations and taking these locations and holding onto them and simulating a war where you're fighting over locations rather than traveling through them. It's very cool to actually see that happen. Okay, West Quarter. It's North Gilead, it's a 2-3. While the West Quarter is in the active location slot, the current quest gains Siege. Okay, now Siege is one of the newer keywords. Basically, Siege changes questing to using the uh, defense rating rather than the attack rating. And that can be a very big deal. The Siege, and there's another one called Battle. Now, these can be quite uh, hardcore, really, for the solo player because it's very, you know, it's difficult to cover all Siege and, you know, get cover Siege and questing and attack. That's pretty difficult, but pretty interesting. Skipper Rooney. Uh, it's a second West Quarter, so there's two of them. There's two West Quarters. Go figure. Okay, the East Quarter. Uh, it is Osgiliath. Again, while the East Call... Oh, uh, well, this is the battle version. Same thing, but battle instead of... Uh, oh, these have got... These have both got shadow effects I didn't read. If the attack destroys characters, that character's controller must return a location he controls with the highest threat to the staging area and they're the same shadow effect on both those cards so almost every single card has a shadow effect in this set if i'm not mistaken shadow 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 no shadow no shadow no shadow no shadow 
Okay, and they are unique. And remember, if you're playing a four-player game, you have to choose all of these to go into the staging area, which is why they don't have shadows. Because part of the setup is choose one unique, choose one enemy in one unique location. No shadow, no shadow. Shadow, 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 shadow. Okay, so there's like two shit cards without shadow, <laughs> basically. Uh, and yeah, interesting. Okay, well, that is that. Uh, East Quarter, uh, we just did that one. Zhidoink. Ruin Square, uh, Surge. No shadow, response. After the enemy is defeated, place one progress token on Ruin Square. Interesting. I like these uh, new way of placing tokens on a location. I think they're good. Ooh, there's quite a lot of them. There's three of those. Ruin Tower. If there is one active location, exhaust a character to travel here. Interesting. That's pretty cool. There are now two active locations. Wow, that's really cool. So you can have two active locations. After the player who controls, yeah, interesting. Two active locations. I, I don't think I've seen that before. Awesome. This is a pretty cool quest. I like the idea of this quest, and it doesn't seem very hard, though. Okay. Uh, what's this one called? How many of these? There's two of these. Pin down. When revealed, add X, to, add X to the archery total this round. When X is the number of locations the players control. If the player controls less than four locations, pin down gains surge. Add X to the archery total this round. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Archery must be a keyword that is come into play. This is strength eight. Maybe it is difficult. <laughs> it doesn't look difficult. It's probably the cards from uh, the other set that makes this hard, I guess. Either way, uh, I'd have to look up what archery means. I think archery was like, just causes damage to people. Hang on for a sec. Yeah, the archery keyword was introduced uh, in the Isengard expansion, or whatever the hell you call it, the, the expansion that goes with this cycle. Basically, it means that it, at the beginning of the turn or whatever they do, it's, it's sometime during the turn, I can't remember whether it's the end of the staging tip or whatever, I can't, it's, it's one of those things. It does X damage and you can divide it up amongst your characters to a character, but you can divide it up how you like. So this can do quite a lot of damage depending on how many characters with ar archery. Interesting. It's a treachery though, so we can just get rid of it pretty easily. Street fighting. When revealed, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until Osgiliath location is discarded. The first player may exhaust a hero to take control of that location. Otherwise, add that location to the staging area. This effect cannot be cancelled. I am not 100% sure why this is a bad card. I guess the whole point of the quest is to get these locations, but this just seems to thin the deck and give you the location that you're trying to get hold of. I guess more locations is a more threat. I'd have to play this. I'm not, I can't know if I can really understand why this card is bad for us. I mean, you discard cards from the encounter deck until you get an Osgiliath location and the first player may exhaust a hero to take control of that location, which is like the point of the quest, isn't it? To take control of locations. That's a weird card. Okay, next. This one's got Surge. When revealed, each player must return the location he controls with the highest threat to the staging area or raises threat by the total will of all locations he controls. And here's the card that does the exact opposite, which takes locations from you. It does have Surge, so cancelling it is a high priority target, they reckon. So they've given it Surge, so it's uh, it still does something, even if you cancel it. Interesting. I think this card, I, th I think this quest is actually quite interesting. I reckon there's a lot going on here that I find very cool. I love the idea of the locate, grabbing the locations, but it seems, doesn't look like a particularly hard quest, but then again, this whole set has been very, very hard. So when I actually get into it and I see how this particular deck of locations and easy to avoid, you know, because they've got very, very high threat values, uh, monsters, you know, because I usually play really low threat decks. How hard are that, how, how these combo with the extra sets that get put in. See, this uses the ar archery set and this, the, I don't know what that is, the, what do they call it, siege machine deck or whatever. 
So it could be a lot harder once those cards come in, because those cards, like that whole set was quite difficult. Okay, so my favorite art for the encounter set is actually that weird card. <laughs> I do like this. It's got the halls, it's got the, the men all in it, you know, sort of lining up. It reminds me a bit in the film when they're all like trapped in that hall trying to, you know, it really feels, you know, it's really feels sort of dark, you know, like they're... I don't know, I, I, soldiers just weird me out. I mean, that is the strangest job, you know, putting your life on the line and killing people and getting killed for a living. I, I, I just I just feel such empathy for them, you know, and what they do with themselves. And, you know, I just always feel so sad for, for warriors, you know. Like, I know they get a lot of flack from people, from pacifists and stuff, but I think that such a heavy job to be involved in and something that I think is actually quite necessary for the... Uh, Let's just start again. Okay, so here is my favorite card for the uh, encounter set art-wise. I mean, just look at this card. I mean, it's got beautiful colors, which is why I like this card the most. It's got, it's nice and deep. It's got a lot of blue with little tinges of red and then it fades up to color. It's in, in the out, in, in the daylight at the base. And not only does it change the color of the background, but also the color, the reflection on the ground. Very, very beautiful drawing, I think. And I think for my favorite uh, card from the Encounter deck, I'm actually going to choose the West Gate. But not necessarily the West Gate. I mean, like, I do really like the West Gate, but I like the entire idea of alternative methods for placing progress tokens rather than just questing. I reckon that that's just all win. And this is a good example of that. This is probably one of my favorite examples because it's not too drastic. So they're my two. Now let's have a look at my fave for the player cards. I think I'm going to have to take Gordian's Fire as my favorite uh, player card. I mean, I think that card is just going to be all sorts of power when it uh, comes down to it. Just, I mean, especially when you play solo, play in multiplayer, I beg your pardon. I mean, if you've got Gondor, or God forbid you've got Gondor and, you know, three resourceful, you can have so many credits. It's just out of control. This could, this could really create some absolutely horrendously powerful you know shots i could see uh yeah i could i could see this card being extremely good and i think my favorite art is actually the sphere i mean a dark deep purple magic ball i mean can you get cooler than that i don't think so anyway so that is this quest which at first glance doesn't look that difficult to me uh i mean i've heard a lot of people say it's difficult it's ranked seven but i have no idea how they work out those difficulty ratings for <laughs> fantasy flight but it doesn't seem that difficult it's i mean it would be, i think a lot of the difficulty is probably from the other cards that have come into it i mean the the, the monsters aren't difficult by today's standards Look at their threat. That's, uh, 25 is the lowest one they've got. Most of them are up in the 30s and 40s. So you don't even need to deal with them. Yeah, interesting. Can't wait to play this. Interesting. young. Okay, well, well, that's it. So I will see you guys next time.